All right, today Mike and I are working on a Bobcat S, what, 530? 530, 530. This is, yeah. Yep. So it's got a Doosan D24 engine in it, and when we're diagnosing these engines, whether it's a no start condition or performance, one of the most important things we need to know is rail pressure. So this one is a perfect example of, of a rail pressure issue, but without software, it's hard to know what your rail pressure is. So that's why we built a gauge that we can tee in to the rail and it'll tell us what our rail pressure is. So without software, this is a very important tool to help us see what's going on with this fuel system and we'll kind of show what, what it is going on here. So if you want to come closer, I can show you right here, this is our rail. So this is right here, you have the line right here coming up to the rail and this is coming off your high pressure fuel pump. You have the rail right here and all of your hard lines to your injectors. Right at the end here is our rail pressure sensor, and this is what we're going to be teeing into. So let's so go ahead and unplug that, Mike. And unplug it. So we're going to we're going to hook up one end. Plug in our yeah. This is our jumper harness. We're plugging in one end to the sensor, and that connects to the gauge. Then we're also going to tee in the sensor, so we don't throw any codes. So the machine can work like normal. Because if you have your sensor unplugged, the machine thinks you're at max rail pressure and it's just it doesn't work so yeah it, it'll send us to like 30,000 psi one. i'll hold this <clears throat> he's going to plug in the leads to the battery so to power it we just got a positive and negative wire that we're just going to put on the battery here or one on the battery I'll so just one on the negative and we're going to put one right here on the b terminal of the starter okay right here you see the gauge is on it's lit up and what we have, we have increments, 5, 10, 15. These are times 1,000. So 5,000, 10,000. It's hard to see on the camera, but 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. Okay. So let's go ahead and start it up. We need a minimum of 4,000 to 5,000 PSI rail pressure just for the engine to start. But at idle, we're probably going to be somewhere around 10 to 11,000, and it should be pretty steady. You ready? All right, go ahead. And running and we're about uh, 11 11,000 PSI is actually holding pretty steady let's go ahead and accelerate the full RPM and without a load on the engine we should be about 20,000 PSI put a load on the engine. You can see that the rail pressure went up under load. But now we're starting to fluctuate on the needle. Now we're starting to lose rail pressure. So we can see how under a load the engine was really fluctuating it was having a hard time maintaining rail pressure so that's our performance issue we're having so when we're out working this machine it wants to try to die off and it'll actually stall the engine out so we're thinking that just based off that information that we've got a fuel delivery problem and i don't think it's coming from the tank because <coughs> your primer me. bulb isn't isn't squeezing flat is what he's going to say excuse me yeah you're exactly right <laughs> So what, what does that kind of leave us with? Just, just a quick guess of what it might be. Fuel delivery. <clears throat> the first thing, I don't know, for me, the first thing I always like to check because it's super easy and it's what I've been trained to do is I'm gonna check um, back leak for my injectors. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if you're not having good rail pressure, one of your injectors could be worn out and you're losing um, flow. Because like you said, this is a a low flow, high, or a low volume, high pressure pump, right? It is, yeah. So if one, if even one of your injectors are bad, you're going to lose a lot of flow. You could, as it gets hot, that injector could leak more and more. But at high RPM, we're 
or creating a lot of flow. So we, we should be able to maintain that even with a leaky injector, the way it starts and everything. But the first thing I want to try is just a fuel filter. Mm. Since it's since it's not pulling the primer bulb flat, it tells me it's not a restriction to the filter. It could just be as simple as a filter. So what we'll do is we'll first we'll just go ahead and service the engine like we're like we want to do, which we're going to do anyways, and then we're going to run another test on it we'll see if that helped thing. or not, and then we'll start getting to injectors and other things if that fuel filter didn't right. help. So let's it go ahead and get it serviced, and we'll come back and see if that helped. Started up good, so it's, yeah, since that's it started how you, good. That's how you can tell it's probably not the injectors. Yeah, exactly. I didn't think about that. So, all right, well, let's get it serviced real quick and see what happens. So Mike just finished servicing up the engine, went ahead and changed out the fuel filter and air filter, oil filter. You just did a full service on the machine, right? So now what we're gonna do is just test our theory, again, using our gauge. We're just gonna run the machine. We're gonna put a load on it. Mike's gonna engage the hydraulics again. And what that does is that just puts a simulated load on the engine and we'll watch our dial and see if our fuel filter actually helped or not. You ready to start it up? Yeah, I do want to make a little statement before what I'm doing here. Um, do this only if you're a trained, um, I guess, professional. I'm going to be, the machine's going to be hot. So if I didn't move it, you know, I could hurt somebody the way I'm, I'm activating it while I'm outside of the machine. So, well, if it's, yeah, just, just don't do what I'm doing. That, okay? that, that's a good point because what he's doing is he's, he's engaging the auxiliary hydraulics not being in the seat of the machine. So the fact that he mentioned trained professionals, maybe we shouldn't even be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Okay, ready? All right, we'll take a look at the gauge here. So there was our 5,000 to get it started. Idle, we're at about 11,000. He'll go ahead and accelerate. 21,000, no load. Now it's under load. actually building rail pressure. We're now at 24,000. A little fluctuation in the needle, but that's a normal. What's important is that we're not losing rail pressure. So we're able to maintain 24,000 pretty easy under load. Thanks, Mike. No problem. So that's just a demonstration of our little tool. I mean, this thing is just awesome to help us just diagnose the fuel system or just check the rail pressure without having a laptop. Is there any other way? I can't think of any other way so except we do for have, a mechanical gauge. Yeah, we do have a mechanical gauge but that we're gonna you, show on the next video. Yeah, you're gonna have to crack the lines and tee into it and it's it's kind of dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. You have, you saw the pressures here, these 26,000 PSI. Yeah, cap capable of 30,000 PSI. So this is definitely more safer. The downside is we don't always know that our rail pressure sensor it's is good. working yep. or accurate. Um, we had a batch of rails, brand new rails that were coming from the factory with bad sensors in them. I actually just talked to someone on the phone the other day who replaced the rail, a whole fuel system, still couldn't get it started because the rail pressure sensor was bad. The ECU was not seeing rail pressure. So the advantage of it, we don't have to have a laptop. The disadvantage of it is we don't know for sure that our sensor's working. So it, yep. could, it could hinder us in that matter. But if we put the mechanical gauge on there, the, the downside is now we have to take our metal lines off, yep. which we don't like to do. We, we shouldn't ever have to really loosen or take the metal lines yes. off. So we'll show the mechanical gauge option on the next video or, or one of the videos in the future, because that is also a, a good tool to have in your diagnostic toolkit. Any questions, let us know. Thanks for watching.